네, 오늘 라이프 앤 넘버스의 특별한 손님을 또 소개해드리겠습니다. 이분은 어, 영화 아바타의 감독 제임스 카메론 그리고 버락 오바마 대통령까지 어, 전 세계의 이 슈퍼 리더들이 입을 모아서 추천하고 칭찬하는 지상 최고의 쇼를 직접 만드시는 분입니다. 세계적인 쇼 비즈니스 기업을 경영하고 계십니다. 이 회사의 기업 가치는 무려 1조 7,500억 원. 다니엘 라마르 부회장님을 소개하겠습니다. 어서 오십시오. 안녕하십니까? 안녕하세요. And thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very, very happy to be here. 자, 저희가 몇 가지의 숫자를 여쭤보고 그게 이제 어떤 의미를 인생에서 담고 있는지를 여쭙고 있는데 첫 번째 숫자로 어, 2억을 꼽으셨습니다. 2억. 그게 뭘까요? All the uh, people that we have touched in our 음. many years at Cirque du Soleil. 야, 2억 명이 공연을 봤으면 어떤 지역적인 쇼가 아니라 굉장히 여기저기 전 세계 여기저기를 다니시면서 하는 쇼인가 봐요. 좀 간단하게 소개를 좀 해주시겠습니까? Yeah, the the one thing that people don't understand is that we are visiting over 450 cities around the world. Mm. So when we start a tour, it always start in Montreal, but then it will tour for 15 years, mm. going around the globe, mm. and that's how we have been able to build. This global brand around 음. the world. Oh, 한 그럼 그러면 한 번에 움직이시는 스태프들이 어느 정도 규모인가요? 꽤 많은 짐도 싸야 되고 잘 모르겠습니다만 동물도 데려다 다리고 다녀야 되고 그런 거 아닙니까? Yeah, first of all, there is no animal at Cirque du Soleil. Uh-huh. We have we have recreated a new category of show that is even more than just a circus. It's, uh-huh. it's really a theatrical, it's music. And, but to come back to your question, uh-huh. we have 4,500 employees that are traveling around the world. So tonight, mm-hmm. we will have 44 shows mm. in presentation somewhere on the globe. So that's how we're able to reach out to so many people every year 음. around the planet. 음. 하시는 주요 사람을 조금만 더 설명을 좀 저희가 공연을 못본 분들도 꽤 있을 것 같아서 설명을 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. Yeah, so the best person that has described Cirque du Soleil 음. is the famous teacher Kim Chan from Korea 음. who wrote the famous book Blue Ocean Strategy. Mm-hmm. And in the Blue Ocean Strategy, they describe very, very well mm. how we have reinvented mm. this new category of show. Mm. Because it's, it's not only circus, it's not only musical, theatrical, scenography, costume, very, very special makeup. Mm. And at the end of it, I like to say to people, what we have done, mm. as Mr. Chang is saying in his book, is we have created a new category of show, mm. which is called Cirque du Soleil. In the past year, the most popular show in our country was the New Allegria Circus. This year, the Lucia Circus is called the Lucia Circus. The Lucia Circus is the Lucia Circus. The Lucia Circus is the Lucia Circus. 이것도 어, 사전 흥행으로서는 사상 최고를 기록했다고 합니다. 개막 2주 전에 9만석 좌석이 모두 동나고 매출이 150억을 이미 기록하셨다고 하시는데 한국에서 특히 이렇게 더 성공적인 이유를 뭐라고 생각하십니까? The one thing I, I think is Korean are very very sophisticated on artistic content. Mm. And I think that our content is also very sophisticated because I don't know if you know that, but when you look to the music hall shows around the world, Seoul is number three. So it's New York, London, and Seoul. So it says a lot about the sophistication of the Korean market. Mm. And that's why I think we fit so well because I think we're even more sophisticated than the mm. music halls. 올해 공연인 태양의 서커스 루치아라고 하는 것은 부회장님이 직접 세부적인 기획도 하시는지 궁금합니다. 대체로 뮤지컬이나 혹은 우리가 익숙한 장르는 어떻게 어떻게 하겠구나 이해가 되는데 이런 그쇼 공연 이건 어떻게 머리를 짜고 어떤 아이디어 회의를 하는지 궁금한데요. So, so first of all, 
we give a mandate to our creative team. Mm. So in the case of Lucia, we gave them the mandate to illustrate in the show the Mexican culture. Mm -hmm. And then the way it works is after that, the team of 20 creators coming from different countries around the world mm -hmm. develop a concept. Mm. And then they come to us and we approve the concept or we change the concept or we give our input. After that, for the first year, it's all about defining properly the concept of the show. So that's the first 12 months. The second year, then we do the casting, we start rehearsal, and we start producing the show itself. Mm. So all the process take two years before we open the show in Montreal. And mm. my involvement is to do checkpoints every second month mm. to see how the show is progressing. 보통 이렇게 그럼 하나의 공연을 기획하면 그 공연된 기획은 대체로 이게 기업이니까 이익률이 어느 정도 프로핏이 나오는지 그것도 좀 여쭤봤으면 좋겠는데요. So first of all, uh, the, the way the uh, financial works mm. is we would like to deliver for the entire company not just one show, but the entire company, the 44 shows, we would like to bring back a profitability of between 15 to 20%. Mm -hmm. So that's the return we are looking as an organization. Mm -hmm. When we produce a show like Luzia, mm -hmm. we will invest $24 million, mm -hmm. but, uh, but the payback is very, very soon because we sell mm -hmm. every year millions of, of, of tickets. So that's how the uh, the structure, the financial structure works. Okay. Oh, 굉장히 재밌는 비즈니스 모델인 것 같아서 여쭤봤습니다. 솔직하게 답을 해주셔서 <웃음> 감사합니다. 그두 번째 숫자로 47을 꼽아 주셨어요. 이건 어떤 뜻입니까? Uh, it's uh, the year. Mm. I joined Cirque du Soleil. I was 47 years old, mm. and 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 then that's how I started my career. At, uh, at Cirque du Soleil after I left the TV network in Canada oh. to join the circus. 은퇴하시기에는 좀 빠른 나이인 것 같고 그렇다고 새로운 일을 시작하기에는 좀 늦은 나이셨던 것 같은데요. Uh, listen, uh, we should ask the founder of the company because he's the one who called me. Uh -huh. But that was to be very candid with you. That was a very tough decision for me to accept to leave a very traditional business Mm. meaning the TV business, TV to go out with the circus and travel around the world. So that was, that was really a tough decision for me, mm. but probably the best decision in my life because it brought me from being a local guy in Montreal mm. to become a citizen of the world mm. with Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> 원래 모험을 좀 즐기시는 그런 성향이셨어요? I, I was not. That, mm. That's the first time I took a very aggressive and a very risky decision. Mm. But I had the feeling that if I wanted to work at mm. the international scale, mm. there's not that many companies in the entertainment industry that could offer me that challenge. So that's why I just closed my eyes and mm. dive with the circus. Ah, <laughs> 사람들이... 나를 스카우트한 이유가 이거였구나라고 생각하게 됐던 어떤 몇몇 그런 장면들이 있습니까? <웃음> I think it was also a big risk for him. And at the time, I had the founder who was an amazing creator. This guy, what he needed, he needed someone like me that will bring business development. Mm. And that's my strength. And that's what I brought to the company. I brought new idea, I brought new shows, I brought new project mm. that has deliver the growth of the company internationally. Mm. Mm. And, uh, and, and the TV business was not as helpful as I thought it would be <laughs> because there is no point of reference with Cirque du Soleil. Uh -huh. Normally, when you go to a, a new job, uh -huh. there are some point of reference. You can compare yourself to another company or the industry, or but there is no benchmark uh -huh. for Cirque du Soleil. So that was the toughest part for me.
음. 유니크하고 크리에이티브 하기 위해서는 돈이 많이 들것 같습니다. 그러니까 비용을 많이 들여야 어, 더 유니크해질 수 있을 것 같을 텐데 모든 영역에서 경영을 하다 보면 그두 사이에 저울질을 해야 될 때가 있을 텐데 그럼에도 불구하고 크리에이티브를 선택 하십니까? 아니면 그렇게 하기 위해서는 어, 어떤 의사 결정 과정이 필요한가요? 그 회사에서는? Yeah, first of all, you have to be able to take risk because no risk, no rewards, and it is very, very important. In our case, you know, Cirque du Soleil was using its Canadian base to have a financial situation. that will allow the organization to take some risk. Not all the risk, but, but, but a good risk by saying we're going to win mm. in the U.S. And that's how it started. Mm. So you have to have the guts to say, I'm going to conquer one market. Mm. And then after that, another one. So you mm. cannot try to take a risk that is too big mm. and kill your organization. But you should be able... within your five-year plan to identify some markets where you strongly believe that you can succeed. Hmm. You know, from a negative perspective, take a company like Kodak. Kodak. Kodak, they have turned down creativity. They have renegade the fact that digital will take over from the paper photographing. Hmm. Guess what? They don't exist anymore. And there are organizations that uh, took their business by bringing the digital uh, photography. So more and more, and I, I would challenge anybody in any sector of activity mm. not to be creative because you can be creative in any sector of activity. I can take a company as traditional and boring as a bank and bring me in a bank and i will probably in list of 10 different sector where they can be creative creating a new banking services creating a new marketing campaign being more creative the way they talk with their employees mm. there are a lot of ways you can be creative mm. and that's why i want to demonstrate to people because creativity is the first step to innovation mm. And if you don't have innovation in your sector, then there is a big threat that mm. maybe one day you will disappear. 그럼 그렇게 되기 위해서는 어떻게 해야 될까요? 회사에 커다랗게 be creative 이렇게 써놓는 거가 필요합니까? 아니면 매일 아침 직원들이 일과를 시작할 때 CEO와 함께 요가를 하거나 뭐 그런 게 First of all, you have to define what kind of creativity you are looking for. Because we cannot, you know, shut down the door here and mm. say, okay, let's be creative today. Mm. It means nothing. What's important is to say, I have a problem or I'm looking for a new product or I'm looking for a new medical uh, surgery or I'm looking for something very special. Mm. And then you put the problem in the middle of the table mm. and then we can be creative mm. by bringing new innovative solution. But you have to be very, very clear to the mandate that you're asking your employees. Mm. Because, you know, in our case, you know, people are saying, yeah, it's easy to be creative at Cirque du Soleil because it's a creative company. But it's impossible like, at the bank. But as I said earlier, it mm. is possible. Mm. You just need to put the problem on the table in a creative way, find new solution that mm. are going to change your organization and make it much more performing. Mm. And that's what the CEO of a company should do, should send a clear signal to their employees that he's looking for new creative idea. Mm. 혹시 지금 말씀하신 답으로 위로 유초 위로와 짐작하자면 뭔가 좀 크리에이티브한 방식으로 문제를 풀려고 할때 CEO를 비롯한 기존 조직이 거기에 대해서 시큰둥 하거나 그런 반응을 보이면 안 되고 매우 좋은 방법이다라고 칭찬을 많이 해 주는 게그첫 번째 그 어떤 생기는 도전과 혹은 걸림돌을 넘어가는 그런 요령이라고 설명을 해 주신 겁니까? Yeah. Uh, that's a very very important question. Because 
I understand that there are, you know, bosses that are stubborn and, 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 and you shouldn't work there, by the way. But my advice to someone that has an idea in an organization is not to go to the bus and say, oh, I had a great idea. <laughs> a great idea means nothing. Hmm. A great idea should be supported by studies that shows why this idea can work. And also, just don't go by yourself to your bus with this idea. Bring some allies. Talk with your team. Talk with your colleagues and create you know, support for your ideas. But if you go to your bus and say, bus, you know, we had an idea, but we wanted to prove to you that it can work. Mm. And then you support it with some facts and arguments that support your ideas. And by the way, I've tested my idea with 5, 10, 20 of my colleagues, and they're all supportive. It's much tougher for your boss to say no. <laughs> Uh, 크리에이티브한 조직을 만들기 위해서는 보스보다는 그렇다면 이제 직원들이 자기의 크리에이티브한 아이디어를 어떻게 이뤄낼 것인가 직원들이 더 스마트하게 일하는 게 중요하다는 나름의 의, 그 의외의 대답이시네요. 재밌습니다. <웃음> you know, we're always talking about people that have been selected by an organization. I strongly suggest that you should also select your employer. <웃음> 부회장님이 그리고 또 하나의 숫자로 꼽아 주신 게 19였는데요. 어, 무슨 의미의 숫자이십니까? 이건 19 COVID-19. Oh, my god. <웃음> I know why I didn't know because I wanted to forget about COVID. <웃음> I wanted to forget for sure because it has been horrible for our organization. We have been shut down in 48 hours. We went from 44 shows wow. to zero show. We went from a billion dollars of revenue to zero revenue. So that was a huge catastrophe for us. And that's why I'm looking at you right now with a big smile, because <laughs> we're back. We saved the company, and now we're back to where we were. 어떻게 그 상황을 벗어나고 극복하셨습니까? Uh, first of all, the reasons why we're still alive is because of the strength of the brand. So we've been able to convince our bankers and new investors. So the new investor believe in the, in the quality of the brand so much that they have invested $350 million to relaunch the company. Today, it looks like a hero. Because it has, uh, you know, the value of the company has grown. And uh, so they're very happy. The bankers are very happy that they didn't sell at a mm. discount. And the new investors, they feel very, very good that they are now the owners of Cirque du Soleil. The people who were angry with the workers are now calling them back. What happened to you after that? After that, what happened to you? About 85% of our employees came back. Mm. The only 50% were people from the administration staff that had found another job. Mm -hmm. But all of the artists came back and most of our employees came back. Mm. And that was really rewarding for us that they have accepted to go through the pandemic mm. and to come back and join Cirque du Soleil. And that's the only way we have been able to be successful so quickly after the pandemic. 그 당시 팬데믹 상황에서 아 이대로 무너지겠구나 하는 생각이 더 많이 드셨어요? 아니면 시간이 지나면 해결할 수 있을 것 같은데라는 낙관적인 쪽이 훨씬 강하셨었습니까? A little bit like in the sports field, you know, mm. people say I have to visualize myself winning. So, so the way I was working, I was visualizing myself to be back at the first show of Cirque du Soleil that will come back. And I envision that I will be hugging the artists and celebrating with them. And that was the only image that I was keeping in my mind. And this visual that I had for 15 months finally happened. When we open our first show, and I have to tell you, that was so much emotional 
that was so great, that was so rewarding that I forgot the number 19. 아, <웃음> 그 과거에는 창의적이면 좋은 음, 것이었다면 앞으로는 창의적이어야만 살아남을 수 있다고 말씀을 어, 하십니다. 왜 그렇습니까? 창의적이지 않아도 그냥 살아남을 수 있, 있을 수는 없을까요? Impossible. I go as far mm. as to say, without creativity, there is no business. Because if you're not innovating, one day someone else will surpass you, and you will disappear. It's as simple as that. Maybe it won't happen overnight, but it will happen over a period of five to ten years. So all the organization that said. I'm going to remain stable. Stability mm. doesn't exist. Creativity brings innovation, but innovation brings leadership. So if you're not a leader in your industry, it's going to be very, very tough. To my view, impossible mm. to survive for the long term. Mm. And you look to the company, you know, take Amazon, then take Apple, take Microsoft, take Samsung, They never stop innovating, and that's why they're at the scale they are right now. 미래가 아티스트의 시대 또는 아티스트처럼 어, 행동해야 어, 승리를 쟁취할 수 있는 시대라고 설명을 해주셨는데 개인적으로 이 시대의 아티스트 중에 가장 위대한 혹은 가장 어, 선두에 서 있는 본인이 훌륭하다고 생각하는 아티스트가 개인적으로 있으세요? Yeah, I had your amazing opportunity to work with James Cameron. And James, James Cameron is at another level because not only is he a creator, is he an artist, he's almost an engineer by, by, by trade. Mm. He, he's, he's someone who is very, very curious. He wants to know everything about, about everything. Mm. And he has been amazingly good for me. James was pushing himself all the time. Just to give you an idea of his curiosity, if you come in Montreal and visit the creative center of Montreal, mm. of Cirque du Soleil, mm. it will take you probably an hour or two to visit our creative center. When James Cameron visited our creative center, it took him five hours. Why? Because he wanted to know everything about everything. He wanted to know how this camera works. He wanted to know, you know, how the grid uh, is, is built, uh, how the costumes are, are built in our uh, mm. costume workshop. So he is pushing himself all the time. You know, that's why, you know, he's doing scuba diving and, and try to go deeper than anybody else. He's pushing, pushing himself all the time. The other one that has been very, very good for me is Paul McCartney. Uh, Paul McCartney is someone that always wants to find a new song that will make him popular. And I think there are a lot of good examples right now in Korea mm -hmm. of artists Korean artists that have really an international footprint right now. And, and this is great because for the first time in the entertainment history, there are Korean artists that can sold out at the Madison Square Garden in New York. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so there are example, there are Korean example that it is possible. 외국인으로서의 한, 어서 한국의 아티스트들을 볼때 그들이 갖고 있는 일종의 유니크함 그런 게 어떤 거라고 스스로 생각하십니까? 표현을 해주신다면. Yeah, they, they really do. Mm. And I have to confess to you mm. that this year with Luzia, we're bringing a Mexican culture show. Mm -hmm. I hope one day I can do a Korean show mm. with the Korean culture, the Korean music, because I, I love the artistic content that those artists are developing. Mm -hmm. And that will be a privilege for us, not to say an honor for us, mm -hmm. to work with the Korean artistic people. Mm -hmm. 부회장님과 대화를 나누다 보니까 개인적으로 궁금한 개인에 대한 궁금함이 좀 생긴 게 있었습니다. 어, 저는 어, 저도 저희 아이들이 있고 아이들을 좀 
창조적인 사람으로 키우고 싶은데 많은 부모들이 그렇게 생각하시겠습니다만 그래서 부회장님은 어린 시절을 어떻게 보냈는지 혹은 어떻게 보내는 것이 이런 뭔가 창의성을 기르는 방법인지 좀 힌트를 얻고 싶어서요. 어린 시절 이야기를 좀 해주시면 어떻겠습니까? So, so, so first of all, uh, I came from a very poor neighborhood. Uh, in our family, we were very, very poor. And my dad was a blue collar. Mm. And he started to, uh, you know, go to university at night in order to complement what he was doing. And he ended up, uh, you know, being the, the head of a, of, a, of a bank. And I was very impressed by his success. And he has influenced me a lot because I was saying to myself, If he start as a blue collar and he is where he is right now, so I'm starting at this point so I can go further. And and the one thing I've learned within my family, even if we were very, very poor, we were very, very happy because because the family nest was something that was a lot of fun and we were pushing each other all the time. Uh, creating a climate of confidence, which means, yes, you can succeed. Mm. And I think it's very, very important. And I tried to do the same thing with my kids, was to let them know that everything is possible if they have a passion. Mm. If, if, because you cannot work from morning to night for something that you don't like. Because your life is going to be boring. Mm. So, so, so they have to define. And that was interesting because I read a, you know, an article yesterday that Steve Jobs and Warren Buffett and Jeff Bezos all agreed on two things. Mm. Is first, you have to understand what you like to do in life. And second, you should do it because <laughs> then you will succeed. And I think that's the best advice you can give to your kids. 혹시 어, 본인이 도전해 보고 싶거나 넘어서고 싶은 그런 숫자가 혹시 있습니까? Yeah, number seven has always been very, very important in my life because I was born on 7 of July, 7-7. And I always, I always believed that you have to be lucky to succeed because when I look to my life, I think I've, ber- I've been very, very lucky because I changed my life three times and maybe now a fourth time because I changed it going from the PR agency to oh. leading a TV network and from the TV network to lead Cirque du Soleil and right now traveling for Cirque du Soleil but also promoting creativity is, is something very, very important. So that number seven, my lucky number, is very, very important. Because in life, you need a break. You need a possibility to go to the next step. And that has been the story of my life. Mm. 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 In, in Mexican, which mm-hmm. means light, mm-hmm. and then rain, mm. light and rain. And, and they will discover something very, very special because they will see new technologies. Mm. They will see water in the show for the first time for our touring shows. Mm. So I think, I think again, I'm, I'm challenging the people to come and see it. Oh. And I hope I will meet, no, I hope I will surpass their expectations. <laughs> 조금 전에도 항상 사람들의 기대를 조금 더 넘어서는 그런 공연을 보여주고 싶고 보여줄 거라고 말씀하신 그 어, 대목이 항상 인상 깊습니다. 아, 왜그 태양의 서커스가 지상 최대 쇼가 됐는지도 어, 충분히 이해할 수 있을 것 같고요. 네, 어, 도움이 될 만한 많은 말씀을 해주셔서 고맙습니다. 오늘 다니엘 라마르 부회장님 직접 찾아와 주셔서 감사드리고 앞으로도 또 신선하고 재미있는 공연 많이 선보여 주시길 바라겠습니다. 고맙습니다. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.